That's what America make you think, you know? Some people scared to come over here. It was in the press, scared to come over here. And now, you know, people drive their cars, and they're so peaceful and nice, and they got their own airports and hotels and little houses and little streets and little nightclubs, and they, it ain't so bad. No kid, New York is more of a jungle than here. The policemen arrive with four and five guns and dogs. Every minute a homicide, somebody dies, dying with dope and 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 always somebody been raped or somebody been robbed or somebody on the rooftop shooting shooting twelve people. A uh, go man goes in the bank and shoots the tail and stabs the bank official and he runs out and he gets shot down the street. Two cars head on doing a hundred mile an hour. Train jumped over a track. Mine caves in. Always something in America. Ain't that, you're so peaceful over here. When I'm in America, that's the only time I feel color. It's the only time I'm called black. And, and, and around those Western countries is when I'm, I'm called black. When I'm here on my soil, on my land, no one has ever said, so I've never heard the color black or the color white or, or, or brown. I've never heard that. I've never even heard any talks of race in any way. And we have white people here, we have black, we have the Lebanese, we have, you know, Persian, we have uh, Asians, we have Indians, they're all here. Nobody cares. We're not called black, we're not called any of that. We're just people, we're just brothers and sisters in this country. Hello, how are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Yes. Nice to meet you. Thank you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Okay. It's an honor, it's a pleasure to, to be here because um, whenever you can merge the two, sports and education, it's always fantastic. Don't just think this is a sport for men, you know. This is also mm -hmm. going to be, hopefully, programs in place to empower women all throughout. So, um, thank you guys. We appreciate everything that you guys are doing for us, the partnership, and uh, bigger and better things to come in this new year. <laughs> the goal of this was to start from the grassroots, to create that foundation to where we're going to grow this sport to eventually implement and plug it into school. Like in the States, we have football, we have basketball, we have track and field, we have tennis, some schools have swimming. That's what we wanna do here. We wanna implement this sport into schools so we can give opportunities to every student that potentially eventually get out of school and say, I, I, I can't have a job, I can't find a job, I can't do anything. I have all this knowledge and all this schooling and I can't do anything with it. Well, guess what? Now there's another avenue for you. What uh, program are we going to put in place to really help this? Because if we, we can put up the structure, the structure is there, but if the program is not you know, a great program, how do we get people involved to where kids can go and say, I want to go to Unilag because they have this program there. Like, being honest, even in the States, yeah. Plenty of children pick different universities because of the sports that they have and that they offer. So, is I want to make sure that we can have that program in place that's going to be an excellent program mm -hmm. that can entice the students. First of all, thank you guys. Um, it's uh, it's great to be here with you guys here at the University of Lagos. Um, we wanted to, uh, we had a program in place, we had a vision in place, myself, Natasha, Ryan, and Mario, um, and my team. And we thought that, uh, you know, we understand that we, we want to use what I am, use what I know right now, which is obviously my position, my sport that I've been in. We want to use that to be able to create a foundation and a platform for all of you guys, you know, the up and comers the youths, the kids that are watching us, that are watching you guys, that are watching me. Because we have to create something for them that they can one day say that, I want to be like that person, I want to be like that guy. 
And so we came up with the vision, obviously with uh, a series of events that we are going to be putting on. We've already done a season of the AKO show, season one. We're going to be looking to do more seasons. We have the Face Off Fight Night, the first ever uh, pro uh, professional MMA event that we're holding here in Nigeria on Friday at the Lagos Continental. And of course, we understand that you guys eventually are going to be those professionals that are going to be able to compete and going to be able to change your lives and your family's lives forever. So we want to prov we want to prom uh, provide you guys with another platform to be able to do that. And that's what we're doing here today. Uh, we're laying the stone to the first first gym we're, yeah. we're having um, here in Nigeria. And uh, this will serve as a, a, another opportunity for you guys. Whoever wants to participate in the sport, not just participate in the sport, because this is not just a sport for men fighting each other anyhow. This is, this is also going to eventually have programs in place to where women can be involved in this. Women can take self-defense courses in these programs. And of course, some of the baddest fighters in the world today are women. You know, my teammate is one of the baddest, if not the baddest fighter in the world today. Uh, and she's a woman. So, you know, it's not just something for men. Women can do this too. So we thank you guys for giving us our, you know, your attention. It's always good to at least miss the last 20, 30 minutes of lecture in class <laughs> to be able to come and see something new, something different. So we thank you guys. We are gonna um, lay the stone now for our, you know, hopefully groundbreaking. And, uh, you know, but to start that program. All right, well, thank you guys. This sport is growing so fast that guys are getting into it younger and younger right now. We are novices in this sport in Africa and already have three champions. Now imagine what we could be once there's that foundation, that structure to give these youth that background to be able to go into the sport. I think we take over. Lightly now. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigeria and basketball are on the rise, so mm -hmm. we have to make sure our facilities are up to par with everybody else. Uh, Nigeria is beating USA in basketball now, so yeah, yeah. Uh, we provide this. We have so many Nigerians in basketball yeah. that there's so many opportunities there for these guys to come back and, and give back and mentor some of these players here. Yeah. And this is the, one of the biggest and best ways to promote a university when Unilag has the best basketball team. Anybody who's anybody mm -hmm. coming up in basketball in Nigeria is going to want to come to Unilag. Yeah. So that's, that's extremely, extremely important. The organization of Afro-American unity sees the only hope uh, for the black man in America uh, in a strong Africa and, and the necessity of the Afro-American becoming uh, inseparably linked with the uh, overall program that's, that's existing on the African continent. The two problems must go, must be solved together and the two forces must go forward together. And so the organization of Afro-American unity has a program to link the Afro-Americans with the Africans and the Africans with the Afro-Americans. When I say Afro-Americans, I mean those throughout the entire Western Hemisphere. This is our only hope. Our hope is in a strong Africa. And when Africa is strong, our position in America will be one of respect. But if Africa is weak, we will never be in a position of respect in America. I, they used to have a saying that one doesn't have a Chinaman's chance. But they don't say that anymore. They used that expression back when China was weak. But now since uh, Mao Zedong has been successful in making China a strong country, uh, uh, the Chinese have more chance than anybody else. So this saying has become outdated. Well, just as it took a strong China to give a Chinese person respect wherever that Chinese person is found on this earth. Uh, when we get a strong Africa, uh, the person of African origin or African ancestry will be respected any place on this earth, even in America. But he will not be respected in America until Africa is strong, just as the Chinaman wasn't respected abroad until China became strong. Thank you guys, everybody. Thank you for the reception. You know, we're gonna put together, thank you. We'll put together the, the programs and hopefully we'll be able to start something great here, okay? Thank you guys. Appreciate it.
That's big. That's big right there. A lot of people are not going to understand the significance of, of that. But when you are able to implement uh, a program into the school system, that's when you start to take strides, great strides, in, in closing the gap on anybody. Look at it in America. What country is going to compete with us in American football? What country competes with us in basketball? Track and field. I mean, Jamaica now is on their thing, but <laughs> what country? And that's because we have the programs in place embedded in the school system. If we can start that here, watch out, MMA. Watch out.